Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Bregaton. Let's return to Dargonis once again, but this time to my palace. So it's red here, but yellow there. That threw me off a little bit. To the Von Valencius Palace. Are we going to get ambushed again? <laughs> going to have to ban parades in the Protectorate altogether at this point. Oh, this must be Abelard's daughter. The Emperor protects. Welcome home, your lordship. The stately woman in a long, full-dress uniform makes a graceful curtsy. Her short, graying hair does not obscure her stern features. I am Clementia Versarion, Court Chancellor of the Von Valencius Dynasty. On behalf of all of Dargonis, please accept my deepest condolences on the untimely passing of Theodore Von Valencius. Her departure is a terrible blow to us all. But as one star expires, another always flares to life. And although still overcome with bitterness and grief, your subjects hope that you will become the Trade Dynasty's guiding light in these trying times. Clementia. Abelard offers a reserved nod. She nods in return, and the lines on his brow soften ever so slightly. The young man quickly brings a respirator to his burnt face and bows his head courteously. His raven black hair veils his burns and skull implants. His thin metal fingers creak quietly as he offers a welcoming gesture. Achilles Scalander, Secretary at the Administratum Department. I hope your journey to Dargonis was not darkened by unwanted troubles. The Emperor protected us on our journey through the stars. Achilles makes the sign of the Aquila, and may he remain merciful to us till the end of time. Does your lordship wish to survey the grounds? Or perhaps we could set your curiosity by answering any questions you might have. Governor Urban Drivestim has been notified of your arrival in Dargonis, and will visit the palace shortly. The preparations for the official visit are well in hand, but your lordship still has plenty of time before the meeting. Hold on a moment, Clementia. What did you say your last name was? Clementia nods politely. You heard correctly, your lordship. I'm of House Viserion, Lord Abelard's granddaughter and direct descendant. Oh, granddaughter. The succession of service is an effective good. It grants new generations understanding of their function within the mechanism. Chancellor Versarion has held her position at the Von Valencius court for many years. She earned Lord Captain Theodore's respect through acts of great perseverance. There's no room for doubt. Blood had nothing to do with it. The Emperor blesses those who strengthen humanity's domain through their deeds. You have reason to be proud of your progeny. Abelar looks at you in surprise, but then immediately puts on an air of indifference. Thank you, Lord Captain. Why isn't the Governor here with you to greet me? Because he's going to set up an ambush to try to have us killed. Apologies, Your Lordship. Governor Drivestem's residence is on the other side of the world by the administrative palace of Dargonis. We sent word as soon as you entered the system, but it takes time to travel the great distances of your domain. I had to fly through the entire system, and then take a shuttle down to the planet. Chancellor Versarion appears unruffled, 
but you cannot shake the thought that the governor's lateness is a subtle political gesture designed to test the limits of what is acceptable when it comes to interacting with the new rogue trader. I'd like to rest before the meeting. Where are my chambers? They are very close, just down the hall. It is also where the study and the audience chamber are. Achilles' face brightens with a pearly white smile, restoring some of his former good looks. Lady Theodora's study has remained locked since her last departure, but, on account of your arrival, we've arranged for it to be tidied up. It is ready whenever you may need it. You are dismissed. I apologize for my bluntness, but I have a request to make. Perhaps, before the meeting takes place, the illustrious Lord Captain could spare a few minutes for a conversation with me. Achilles bows his head. I am certain that you will find my report on the state of affairs in the Von Vlantis Protectorate most useful. We'll see about that. Also, no ambush. Spiders in a jar. This is intriguing. I right, toss a coin. Blinting in the light, the coin falls into the clear water and sinks to the bottom. Such illustrious society, such well-heeled nobles indeed, it would be worth visiting Dargonis even without getting to know you, Shireen. This world offers huge scope for doing business. As you approach, the Lex Mechanic subtly bows his head while continuing to emit binaric trills. A living fruit-bearing tree in the heart of a hive world is a fantastical sight. They probably use a lot more water to tend to this tree than the average Dargona citizen can hope to receive in their daily ration. The walls of your home suffocate me, Ellen Talk. I long to leave this twisted world at the first opportunity. An ancient cogitator linked to the palace's system networks. Similar finds all over the planet. Many sages and acolytes of the arcane sciences were puzzled over this trophy brought from a forgotten world on the outskirts of the Kronos Expanse. The plaque lists the names of each rogue trader to have led the Von Valantis dynasty dating back to the day the capital world was founded. We can't just go back to this ship if we so desire. I'm not sure what he's supposed to be twisting. I assume this is some sort of stone or rockcrete. So there's nothing for him to twist. Glory to the God Emperor. Standing upon the altar is an ancient image of St. Macarius. That's interesting. Its regal frame is covered in marks. The relic was claimed in a battle in a remote and forgotten world. 
if my cars will come up again. I won't talk about them too much right now because... He might be relevant to this planet, or maybe the Von Valancey's dynasty somehow. No idea. Or it's just a nice little reference. Welcome, your lordship. Let me inform you of the location of the chambers on your dynastic estate. The main throne room is up the stairs and straight ahead. Your subject, Achilles Scalander, informed me that we humbly that he humbly awaits the opportunity to meet with you there. Your lordship wishes to rest after your long journey. And your personal chambers are up the stairs and on the right. If you need anything, whatever your soul desires, I'll be right next to your chambers, eagerly awaiting your orders. All my companions are here. Or the rest of them, anyway. There's a faint mark on the polished mantelpiece, which is likely left by a glass. The leather covers bear the names of the authors, mostly philosophers and theologians from Dargonus. The spines of the books are trimmed with gold. Breeze catcher boots. Whenever the wearer moves through a cell occupied by an enemy, the wearer gains plus 50% dodge against that enemy's attacks until the wearer's next turn. The cogitator is producing rhythmic sounds, among which a faint ringing stands out. This antique piece of furniture is obviously well cared for, but its surface is still covered with a lot of scruff, scuffs, scratches, and stains. Traces of the previous rogue traders who sat at this table. Have their initials in it too. A sturdy safe equipped with several bizarre mechanisms. A multi melter. The largest type of melter weapon, usually only employed by the Adeptus Astartes, are mounted upon Imperial vehicles. Yeah, that's a lot of firepower right there. No doubt about it. By bringing your hand to the scan panel behind the books, you open a hidden door. The bed for the head of a road trader dynasty is befitting the status of its owner. I, could, I don't know, I could see it being bigger. A 
mysterious item undoubtedly created by inhuman hands. Tethlate just looks like a last gun. A mysterious Xeno artifact rests in a stasis field. Uh, looks like it might be Necron in origin. Let's see, green and black. The shelves of the library are laden with dusty tomes. Your eyes linger on the works of several administratum adepts, and the memoirs of some unfamiliar explorer of distant death worlds. Another mysterious item. Ah, uh, looks like one of the arc rifles and an auto gun? Okay. Zealot Cloak. When the wearer hits an ally with an area attack, the wearer gains plus one stack of the Zealot effect until the end of combat. And then the Zealot. The wearer deals plus 10% damage which, with their area attacks for each stack of the Zealot effect. Okay. Plasma Shaper Gloves. These gloves grant the wearer a plus 10 bonus to tech use. They also increase the damage of plasma weapons by 3. Well. An empty glass and three unopened bottles of wine sit on a finely crafted table made from dark marbled wood. Crackling and a barely audible plane of melody come from the old worn speakers. The rare, the rare books arrayed on these shelves with their lavish, almost pretentious bindings seem to be identical. The sumptuous couch up holstered in fine cloth that appears garish in the mellow lighting, does not look so comfortable. I think that should be over here, right? The secret room is remarkably quiet and almost homely. Perhaps your predecessor used it when she sought complete solitude. Listening to the muted melody coming from the Vox speaker, you can easily imagine Theodora reading a book with a glass of expensive wine in hand. I have a glass of wine. Three sealed bottles sit on the sturdy looking low table. They're labeled Grandmaster's Blood, Boon of Terra, and Flame of Purity. Uh, pour a glass of Flame of Purity. The wine fills the glass, glittering in the dim light of the room, like liquid gold. Its tangy flavor burns your throat, leaving behind a spicy, biting aftertaste. You hear a short, faint hum as an unseen motor stirs into motion. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a, a puzzle. But I don't think we have the solution yet, do we? Here's a book. Several books are stacked next to the sofa. Some appear ancient, while others look like they have never been opened. Among Theodora's data that has been restored using your cogitator is the phrase Litanies of the Motive Force. It is the title of one of the books here. That's right, that's gonna be the secret chamber from the uh, cogitator thing, right? So choose the book Litanies of the Motive Force. As you pick up the book, a hidden button in its spine clicks under your finger. Change the music. The vid screen of the data slate before you displays the names of several Vox symphonies. You recognize the melody that is playing right now. It is the first of 36 parts of the Symphony of Honor and Duty. 
All right, choose the piece, The Symphony of Honor and Duty, Part 2. The music in the speakers momentarily grows louder, filling the entire room. It goes back to normal, seemingly without any change. The room responds to your actions with a quiet grinding sound, and a small nook reveals itself in the nearby wall. Inside, you find a data bank bearing the Von Valencia's coat of arms. So we accidentally chose the right one. I chose it because it sounded the most dogmatic. All right, data bank from Dargonus. An engraved data drive found in a cache from Dargonus. The information it contains has been carefully encrypted. That's the throne room. Let's go downstairs first. According to the inscription on the statue, this is a gift from House Gaprek to the Von Valencius dynasty. That was the guy that's in charge of Kiava Gamma. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be cleaning up in the blue chambers. What? Again? The handles and the handrails in the blue chambers are polished five times a day. Might as well send a servitor. So we have people whispering in the procession. Now we're people out of place here. Someone's going to attempt a coup. You talk back to me one more time. I'll grant you your wish. You'll be cleaning up as a brainless, battery-powered in tin can. While we're on Dargonus, I'll check the secretary's reports and keep an eye on the lo logisticians. Master Danrock does his job well, but a little scrutiny goes a long way with him. My compliments to your taste in art. The collection here is extensive and most interesting. I mean, it's not my taste, I I just got here. Mistress Hidari, my patience is not easily exhausted. Are you coming very close? Shall I repeat myself again? No, I will not be issuing you any seal. Not in exchange for your honest word, nor for a bribe. I see the family resemblance with Abelard now. You cannot see farther than your own nose, my dear Clementia. It wasn't a bribe, it was a gift. Now about that seal. Let the rogue trader decide. It's already in the works, so... Your Lordship, I apologize for this ugly scene, but might I ask that you rein in M Mistress Hydari, put a stop to her inflammatory actions toward me. As the Exalted One is my witness, Shireen, I've tried everything I could to spare you any unnecessary headache over the seals for the Mercatum Tabula Officiali. 
I even showed this aid with a temper worse than a sandstorm. A certificate with your signature. But your Chancellor merely kept batting me away with her flail of baseless denials. I suspect that the reason for this has nothing to do with my humble personage. Clementia purses her lips and glowers at Jai. Oh no, this isn't about me at all. Jai narrows her eyes as she peers into Clementia's face, so the latter finally looks away. I see. Well, Chancellor, will you tell us yourself, or should I help you? Whatever is the matter, Mr. Versarian? I'm afraid that my words may anger your, lord your lordship. Came out weird. Clementia lowers her head in shame, so for offering it up to be removed from her shoulders. The seal you're looking for was lost over a quarter of a century ago. Her ladyship Theodora von Valencius ordered a new one to be delivered from the Imperium, but, as you well know, we're a long way, from long way away from Holy Terra. And with warp storms ravaging the Corotus Expanse, we have been able to receive a replacement to this day. Uh, give Clementia the seal with the winter scale coat of arms. Could this be the seal in question? This is, without a doubt, the administratum seal from winter scale's realm. But why is it the original and not a copy? Ah, I think I understand. Well, the laws of the Imperium do not prohibit heirs of other houses from using this seal in times of need. I order to have servants of the machine cult create a duplicate so as to avoid such embarrassing predicaments in the future. I don't want to threaten Abelard's family. There's something I must discuss with the Chancellor in private. Oh, by all means, Shireen. I do not waste any more of the precious balm that is your time on matters related to me. If I may excuse myself. What are your responsibilities as Chancellor? To put it simply, I'm your trade representative. Any and all decrees, deals, official communication, and meetings are first reviewed by me, and then forwarded to you and from you down to the hierarchy. Hier hierarchy. My purview also includes overseeing your lordship's property, the palace, the estates, the many gardens, and other domains on Dargonis that you have inherited from Lady Theodora. And whenever you're present on Dargonis, consider me your personal secretary. What can you tell me about Dargonis? All deals and important decisions are made here in the capital. Many years ago, an ancestor of Lady Theodora signed an agreement with the Adeptus Administratum, which allowed for efficient management of the world and the neighboring systems. In accordance with the decree, a share of the planet's population was assigned to the Administratum and converted into servitor scribes. They now toil across the entire world. Dargonis is also the seat of several noble families who run all the major planets in the Protectorate. If I, may, if I may express my not-so-humble opinion, they care very little about who exactly stands at the helm. Those piranhas think about their own profits just as much as they do about the prosperity of the Protectorate itself, if not more. And lastly, Dargonus has its own fleet, a luxury unavailable to the vast majority of other worlds in your realm. In addition to warships, the Protectorate also employs privateer ships which are used to transport cargo between worlds. Does the capital stay in contact with the other worlds in the Protectorate? Unfortunately, not at this time, your lordship. After the few representatives of the, of the Adeptus Astro Telepathico and Dargonis went into a frenzy, some of the psychers were tragically pacified by the respect of the authorities. Since then, communication with the neighboring systems has been unreliable at best. Thanks be to the master of mankind, you managed to find your way to the capital. If the noble houses are so volatile, what sense is there in keeping them? Over the many centuries, an intricate hierarchy has formed within the ruling elite of Dargonis. The great houses do more than plunder your treasury. It is replenished, to a large degree, thanks to their administrative work and their lands. Naturally, you could get rid of anyone whom you consider surplus to requirements. But right now, it could threaten the fragile stability 
that is currently holding the Protectorate together. Are there any other issues that I should be aware of? Apart from the disrupted communications, Dargonis was recently raided by enemies of humanity. However, the fleet, under the command of Captain Martheus Versarion, a trapped over the accursed Xenos. If you ask for my opinion on this matter, we have the situation completely under control. You can't try avoiding your gaze for just a moment, but for the first time, sorry, for the first time, it's obvious that Clementia is looking out for her house's good name. But despite the confidence in her tone, you can tell that she does not entirely believe her own words. Tell me about Governor Drivestem. Urban Drivestem is a well-respected man, and not just on Dargonus, but throughout the Protectorate. For many centuries, his house has supported the capital's administration and the logistics between the Von Valencia systems. The Drivestem's efforts secured years of order and prosperity for Dargonus. What's more, Lady Theodora personally insisted that Lord Urban specifically be made the next governor. The way you speak of Drivestem, I hear a hint of either contempt or resentment. No, no, I don't believe I feel either, your lordship. Clementia's steely eyes stare into the distance, her jaw clenching visibly. She speaks in a polite but clipped manner, really flustered by your insight. We have different views on how to run a world. We sometimes have discussions over the laws that are enacted. We both work for the good of the Von Valancey's protectorate. That much can be said without a doubt. Thank you for the report, Chancellor. I serve the Von Valancey's protectorate, your lordship. Achilles Gilander, does he cause any problems? Why, none at all, your lordship. Secretary Scalander is an outstanding individual and a loyal servant of the Von Valancey's dynasty. In Lady Theodore's absence, we collaborated on a number of issues related to the well-being of your domain, and he has proven himself quite capable. And I don't know why, but when the governor trembles before Achilles, which is unusual for a man of his, shall we say, standing, the last word brings a slight smile to her lips. The governor can wait a little longer. I still have matters to take care of. Uh, certainly, your lordship. However... Her thin lips twist slightly. I do not concern myself with the governor's feelings, but I must warn you, your action or inaction may be interpreted in a certain way. Now, if your lordship will excuse me. My appearance has caused a slight disturbance in the ranks of the servants of the Omnissiah assigned to the palace. Analysis of the performance of rituals and maintenance litanies has produced a satisfactory result. All right, I think we'll talk to them next time. The Von Valencius Dynasty Throne, a visible symbol of the rogue trader's power, which now belongs to you. Okay. I'm going to call it here, and next time we'll speak to Heinrichs and Achilles Scalander, and then meet with the governor. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.